Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Ricardo de Silva. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, welcome to Mass this Sunday, where we celebrate the baptism of our Lord, the end of the Christmas season. The good news has come. Now it is up to us to proclaim that good news of salvation to the nations. In today's gospel, we hear a voice from above saying, you are my beloved, in you I am well pleased. Can we hear that today in our own lives, that we are the beloved of God, the pleasure of God? For the times perhaps when we could not hear that, or if we cannot hear that today, let us bring ourselves before a merciful and loving God. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise, praise you, we bless you, you we Lord, adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who when Christ had been baptized in the River Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared your beloved Son. Grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well-pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. 
Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, how great you are. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God. How great you are. O Lord my God, how great you are, clothed in majesty and honor, wrapped in light as with a robe, you stretch out the heavens like a tent. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, how great you are. On the waters you establish your dwelling, you make the clouds your chariot, you ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers, flame and fire your servants. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, how great you are. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Vast and wide is the span of the sea, with its creeping things past counting, living things great and small. Bless, Bless the Lord, Lord O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, how great you are. All of these look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it, they gather it up. You open wide your hand, they are well filled. Bless, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, how great you are. You hide your face, they are dismayed. You take away their breath, they die. Returning to the dust from which they came, you send forth your spirit and they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, how great you are. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, for the grace of God has appeared for the salvation of all, training us to renounce irreligion and worldly passions and to live sober, upright and godly lives in this world, awaiting our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to redeem us from all iniquity and to purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Saviour appeared, he saved us, not because of deeds done by us in righteousness, but in virtue of his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal in the Holy Spirit which he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ our Saviour, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life. The Word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. John said, He who is coming is mightier than I. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. 
at that time as the people were in expectation. And all people questioned in their hearts concerning John whether perhaps he were the Christ. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming, the thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens was o- were opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form as a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sure we're all familiar with the scene of the baptism of the Lord, but just picture this because we don't get it in the gospel today, and I think it's helpful context. While John the Baptist, not yet the Baptist, but while John is in the desert living a particularly ascetic, simple, even extremely poor and rigorous life, according to what he believed God's will for him to be, God calls him to go to Jordan to preach repentance, where the people are living under the rule of Herod, the Tetrarch. Upon arrival, John immediately, it seems, stirs up trouble with Herod, criticizing him for marrying his brother's ex-wife. And he goes around telling people to live more humbly, having only one tunic, not extorting or accepting bribes, feeding the hungry, preaching the good news, and announcing the coming of one greater than him. Suffering such a personal attack, Herod is enraged and orders John the Baptist to be captured, incarcerated, and eventually beheaded for denouncing the king's apparent licentiousness. But in the interim, John's message reaches to the people, and he begins to have a cult-like following as a prophet, especially because his message seems to have basis in Scripture and the people respect God who had delivered them before from bondage. And so the Baptist's message of repentance and conversion begins to take hold, and people flock to bathe in the waters of the River Jordan where they are baptized. Among those flocking to the Jordan to receive baptism from the Baptist is Jesus, the one who John says he is unfit to tie the laces of his sandals. And that's a serious admission on John's part. Only servants untied the laces of their master's shoes. So John doesn't see himself worthy to be associated with the Son of God, even in this most lowly of ways. Yet Jesus chooses the Baptist to be his baptizer. He is sure of who John is, even when John has no faith in himself. And though the account we read this year from Luke's gospel does not explicitly mention John and suggests, in fact, that John is imprisoned at the time of Jesus' baptism, most scholars of the Bible appear to see this omission of the details of Jesus' baptizer as literary rather than pointing to an absolute historical fact. But perhaps the juxtaposition of John's imprisonment, the one who preached repentance and drew the people to accept the good news of their salvation in God, with Jesus' baptism in the river, is a foreshadowing of Jesus' own fate, that the one who calls out injustice who straightens paths by lifting the valleys and lowering the mountains to create a plain, even ground for the glory of God to be revealed, is the one who is misunderstood. 
persecuted, and killed. Like John the Baptist, Jesus will suffer and die. But his death is not a suffering in vain. It is one blessed by God. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. Again, these words uttered from the heavens over Jesus in the Jordan speak to God's pleasure and favor at sending his only son into the world. But also perhaps God's pleasure and favor upon those gathered with Jesus in the water at the time. Apparently, there was no social distancing in sight. And with John the Baptist, the righteous one languishing in prison, awaiting an awful fate. A sign from the heavens that salvation is ours even while we are bathing in the waters of our own sin. Waters into which God's Son enters to free us from sin and evil. The act of God entering the waters of our sin and from whence our baptism comes is significant. It is particularly significant in Luke because Luke came to preach conversion to those who were wealthy, to those who had power. And he didn't do this in a way that was violent. It wasn't about chastising, but encouraging. Encouraging people to enter into the waters and receive the baptism from the Lord. We have a sense of what this is from our first reading. Comfort my people. Speak tenderly. Cry aloud to her that salvation, persecution, and warfare is ended. Let's hear that for ourselves today. God, in the midst of our sin, while we are bathing in sin, invites us to receive baptism, a baptism that is comfort for us, that speaks tenderly to us, that is a loud cry of our salvation, a cry that we heard in the angels, in the rejoicing of the angels, Gloria in excelsis Deo. That cry is ours today as we come to the end of the Christmas season and enter into ordinary time. What more can we ask of God when we are bathed in sin? Let's go back to that first reading. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs. He will carry them and lead those who are with young. Again, let's experience that for ourselves today. That we might be fed as one of Jesus' flock. That we might be one of the lambs gathered unto Jesus' self. And not only gathered, but lifted up, carried in the bosom of Jesus and led by God into our salvation, the waters of baptism that are ours. And if God has done that for us, and if our baptism is a mission, a sending out, then that is what we call to do for others. Can we be a people and indeed a church who feeds, gathers, carries, and leads God's people? That's up to us.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. On this feast of the baptism of the Lord, when Christ was revealed as the beloved one, we turn to God our Father as the beloved of God, confident that God will hear and answer our prayers. For the church, that all who have been baptized will be inspired by the Holy Spirit to give united witness to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who do not yet know Jesus as the beloved Son of God, that they may open their hearts and come to believe in the good news. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For peace with justice throughout the world, that all people will turn from hatred to love, and from violence to peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For a true spirit of humility and evangelization, that in our preaching, prayer, and example, we may always point away from ourselves and towards the living Christ. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For all those in our parish, both children and adults, who will be baptized in the coming year. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the sick, the lonely, the housebound, and the vulnerable, that in the midst of their suffering, they will experience the loving arms of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the heavens, almighty Father, and pour out your Spirit upon your people gathered in prayer. Renew us in the grace of our baptism, so that we may reflect ever more faithfully the image of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Be God Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of life. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan, you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your words dwelling among us. And by the Spirit descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the Passover cup and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be shared for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we ask that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember also, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bhutti, our Bishop, the clergy and God's entire people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her husband, the Blessed Apostles, John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and let's take a moment to pray for peace in our world, peace in our homes, and peace among all of God's people. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter through my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, when you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly ask your mercy, O Lord, 
that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your head and pray for God's blessing. May God, the source and origin of all blessing, grant you grace, pour out his blessing in abundance, and keep you safe from harm throughout the year. Amen. May he give you integrity in faith, endurance in hope, and perseverance in charity with holy patience to the end. Amen. May he order your days and your deeds in his peace, grant your prayers in this and in every place, and lead you happily to eternal life. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you always and come down upon you now. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.